You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 101 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sofia Yagela. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This podcast is brought to you by the Western English Sales Association, WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia, this is the second to last episode before the January WESA trade show. Yes, we're so close and just have less than a month left. And well, with the holidays, the January trade show is really just going to be here before we know it. And as we mentioned recently, the WESA trade show is growing and we were able to add more exhibit space to the 10th floor of the Dallas Market Center. So we just counted the product lines and are excited to share that 64 product lines will be showcased by WESA exhibitors on the 10th floor. What updates can you share with us since that announcement? We have finalized the floor plan for that 10th floor, which is available on the app and wesatreasure.com, a special postcard insert in the directory, and then also on-site monitors. And we have also finalized the opportunities that we will be offering buyers on that floor. So there will be a contest for a $500 prize. To sum up, buyers can engage in a quick, fun, and interactive contest on that 10th floor, and the winner will be announced on Saturday, January 14th, via our um, Instagram at WESA Trade Show. And then WESA will also give exhibitors two other giveaways to give out to buyers, so that will be exclusive to the 10th floor as well. And lastly, we'll have some great new photo backdrops that actually a local artist created for us and the exhibitors and the buyers. And those will be in the social arena. So there's a lot to explore on that new floor. So you should definitely come by. Seven years ago, the management of Australia's top-selling steel-toed work shoe decided to tap the U.S. market by selling through Western wear stores. Part of the strategy was not only to sell its basic lines, but to develop a Western-style work boot and a line of women's size work boots in color. The brand offers both steel toe and metatarsal protective features. Michael Prescott of the company joins us to chat about all of this. Mike Prescott, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on the Wisdom by Wessa show to talk about Steel Blue. Now, this is a company that actually started in Australia, uh, and now you're doing business here. Why don't you kind of bridge the gap between, uh, what, 20-some years ago, 27, I think you told me, in Australia to where you are today in terms of marketing your products uh, here in the U.S.? Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on the show. About 27 years in business uh, in Australia, we're the number one safety boot. We've got a very large percentage of the market. And about seven years ago, my boss, Steve Nash, he came over here and literally started knocking on doors and making phone calls. And I came on board about five years ago, and I've been with the company exactly five years. And we're doing very well. Uh, even during COVID, even during the uh, stock issues and the shipping issues, we've managed to to do well over the last couple of years. We had the best couple of years we've had. So, Well, that's great to hear. And of course, you're serving a market that was most of the people who wear your footwear for working during COVID. So that gave you a chance to penetrate the market and show your products a little bit. But one of the things I think you found as you came to this country was that the distribution channel, the most effective distribution channel, might well be Western wear stores. Is that correct? That is correct. There are not a lot of just shoe stores that sell safety boots. In in Texas and Louisiana, which is primarily my territory, it appears that to get into the Western stores is the the, the goal. 
And we really couldn't do that until we convinced our board of directors, and it took four years in which to convince them to build a square toe boot. And we got that square toe boot in February of 2020. And then, of course, we all know what happened the month later. But even despite the the setbacks of COVID, we were able to take the world's very first direct attached square toe boot into market. And that allowed us to start getting some of that penetration into the brick and mortar stores of the Western retail world. And of course, you also, in deference to that world, developed a Western boot style that appealed to the Western wear retailers. That's correct. That's the the square toe boot that I just mentioned. And we also have a round toe Wellington style boot that does very well for us in a metatarsal and just a safety toe cap. And now this year we're bringing to market a waterproof soft toe, round toe, Wellington style boot. And we'll have that at the show to um, to show off and it's ready to ship. It's in stock right now. Now, for those among our listeners who maybe they're thinking about carrying your products or they're wanting to know more about it, you've used the term steel toe and metatarsal. Kind of explain what those two mean in terms of the design of the shoe and what it's designed for uh, in the workplace. Sure, yeah. So not every work boot has to be a safety toe, as I'm sure everybody knows. But we have, you know, our we have our soft toe work boots which are mostly waterproof unless they have a zipper. And then we have our safety toe caps, which all of our boots currently in the U.S. are a steel-toed boot. Now, we are working to bring some composite-toed safety toe boots to market. But right now, everything we have is a steel toe. And then in addition to that, behind the toe cap, there's a niche boot called a metatarsal boot, which has the extra protection behind the toe cap on the upper, on the vamp, that protects the metatarsal bones of the foot. Of the foot. And um, those are mainly for people who are like working with steel or out in the heavy oil field that need that extra protection in case they're dropping things. Okay. Uh, another move that you made, which is unique to what you're doing here, I think, in the U.S., and one that will be of interest to Casey because uh, she loves to see what fashion aspects come out of the products we talk to. You introduced a line of women's sizes, and by that I don't mean small men's sizes. You've introduced a line of women's sizes, and lo and behold, in colors. That's correct. Now, not everybody, but a lot of our competitors build their ladies' shoes on smaller men's lasts. And, of course, the last is just the mold from which a boot or a shoe is made. But we actually use true female lasts, and we have had just whole sizes up until uh, next year, probably in February, hopefully late February, we're going to be having our half sizes come in. So we have a ladies line that is colorful, and we are going to be introducing half sizes. Uh, we'll probably be taking pre-sales at the West's show for, for these uh, boots. They're going to start at a ladies five. We'll go six, and then we'll have half sizes up to nine and a half, and then we'll have the 10 and 11. There's certainly been a time or two in my life I wish I would have had a pair of these on, um, <laughs> but uh, and, and pink would be great. But nonetheless, I, I do think it's unique um, for the women's line. I absolutely think it's necessary for the half sizes especially, but just think about it. When you turn on HGTV, you see women remodeling homes and and construction and welding and and just so many things, these women that are so amazing doing their own construction, remodeling homes and stuff. So um, very neat that you guys are including that. Um, I'm definitely drawn to the part on your website with the articles. And that's kind of where I wanted to go first. And one article that popped out at me was, what are the most comfortable diabetic work boots? I, I just found that interesting because I would never think of that if I'm boot shopping of any sort. But everybody we talk to here is obviously successful. And it's in, I always look for the things that make them unique. And I would say since never in my life have I thought about that or read an article about that or heard anybody market something like that. I wanted to start with that because I'm sure that's not the first, you know, thing that you've kind of 
zeroed in on. And when you open that article, it's a, it's a very good read. And maybe just talk a little bit about these instructional articles that you guys write. I think they're very helpful. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing that up. We are very proud to be participating in a, a partnership, if you will, with the American Diabetes Association, the ADA. We are partnered with them for their Better Choices for Life program. And what that is, is it's a program that helps people living with diabetes make the best choices for them. I think there are several, there are several products and several companies that are participating in that, that program. But basically, we've been vetted by a couple of different white, pep, white papers. Mm-hmm. And the ADA has given us approval for people living with diabetes or people that have neuropathy. Of course, you know, our boots have no medical value per se. Sure. But yeah. people living with neuropathy, they have to be very careful of um, blisters or rubbing. Yes. Uh, the, the, the way that our boots are constructed with the liners being the way they are, the, the, the professional quality and comfort uh, insoles uh, that we provide, it makes living with diabetes good because it doesn't cause any um, unnecessary rubbing or blisters on the feet, which could lead to, um, you know, some, some trouble with that. So, uh, yeah, if you go to the ADA, it'll take you on a link to our mm-hmm. website. And um, we're very proud of that. We're the only footwear manufacturer to be partnered with the ADA. That's amazing. Obviously, it jumped out at me for a reason. I have a cousin that uh, very close to that lives with diabetes, and uh, any injury to the foot is, um, you have to be very, very careful. So, what an interesting and helpful uh, boot. Something definitely, if I was a retailer, that that's something I would cling on to and get out there. Um, Anything you can do to help people is. you know, what it's all about, really, at the end of the day. And I think that leads me to the next question. To have to pay attention to detail that much, to create a boot that is suitable for somebody with diabetes, um, I guess that that would speak really heavily for your technology. Would, would you like to talk about the technology of your boot with us? Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the U.S. are not familiar with our particular style of production. Most boots historically are glued in or they're stitched in, which is called welted. And we fall right in the middle with a process called direct attach. Now, there are some other brands that are doing this, but it's very few and far between. What we do is we take a preformed outsole and we set the leather upper into it with a Desmond machine. And you can look at this technology um, on our website. You can actually view a video of how it's done, but we mm-hmm. shoot in a liquid layer of polyurethane to create a midsole. And it hits a catalyst and it chemically welds the leather upper to the outsole of the boot. And because of that, we say little to no break-in period. Because, of course, there's a break-in period, but it's not the same as a very stiff, hard, uh-huh. stitched-in, welted boot. Sure. It's called a TCT technology. It's a trisole comfort technology. And it's something that we've come up with. And we use a material called Poron which is an open-celled memory foam that keeps its elasticity and its buoyancy throughout its life. You can take the heel of our boot and push down your weight into it, and you can feel a lot of give, a lot of comfort. And uh, that that lasts through the life of the boot. That's amazing. I'm looking on the technology part of your website right now, and um, my eye went to electrical protection. Um, Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so in in um, in the U.S. in the market, most people want a boot that's rated for EH or electrical hazard. Uh, that is built in a way that protects the wearer from an arc. Uh, of course, you know there's much there's a lot of other PPE that should be worn if you're dealing directly with electricity. But um, but but most of our boots are EH rated, which is a pretty good standard in in the industry. It's amazing. And I, I kind of just jump around. Um, I, I try not to do a whole lot of research before we interview people because I like to be, you know, inquisitive and not know everything. And so I'm jumping around on your website and I, I moved to your comfort guarantee. Um, you know, t- tell us about that, your comfort, 100% guaranteed. Yeah. So we have two different things working simultaneously. We have a 60-day comfort guarantee. And of course, you know, this would be a great opportunity to jump in and say that we do not sell direct. We have no D to C. You cannot go to steelblue.com and buy a pair of steel blue boots. We are Uh growing our business organically through distribution. So 
you have to go and find a distrib- distribution partner that to buy the pair of boots. But because of, because we're new to market, because we haven't been in the safe that long, we back up every one of our boots with a hundred percent guarantee for sixty days. And what that means is, if you buy a pair of boots and you decide they're not for you, we'll give you your money back. Let's try something else. But the hope is that perhaps we just got you in the wrong size or the wrong style. So we would trade out that ten and a half wide for the ten and a half D that you should have got. But um, yeah, we honor every purchase with a 60 day, no questions asked guarantee. And then in addition to that, we have a six month uh, defect warranty. And of course we all know the difference between wear and tear and a true defect. And we ask all of our partners to, to honor that. I think it's so important. Um, obviously for our comfortable shoes and sometimes fashion doesn't always go along with that guideline but uh I, when you're out working and stuff i compare it to horses you, you they say no foot no horse that's the same with people you know if you're you're trying to work comfort is a must and i always hear my husband complain um he just can't find steel toe boots that feel good that are comfortable that aren't clunky and heavy and usually it's me finding things for myself to buy and uh but found something else for another family member to buy on this show. This show's going to break me, but, um, I, it's, it's, uh, there, it's just so many great companies and we have the privilege of talking to all of you. And I'm just so interested who, who knew there could be so much research and such a great product, you know, I, when you think of still toe boots and so definitely something you'd want to get out there and maybe wear around at the West of trade show, right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Stay comfortable. As, as you had mentioned, you do not sell direct. You sell through retailers. We have retailers who are listeners to this show. Maybe they haven't carried any work shoes or work boots, or now they're listening to this show and thinking, hmm, maybe there's a chance for me to expand my line and generate some more revenue. But if I'm the buyer for a retail store, how do I reach you? Where do I reach you? What do you want to know? And how do we begin to do business? Yeah, well, we make that very, very simple. Um, If you're in Texas or Louisiana, um, you could uh, just call in. Well, of course, you, nationwide, we, we have a, a customer service office in Houston, Texas, and it's it's uh, manned by two of the greatest ladies that work in the business and in, in customer service. We have Angie and Anna. They run everything. They're the hardest working people in Steel Blue. Um, you can call in, uh, get the number off of our website and call in, and they'll um, send you to the person with whom you need to talk to. And if it's in Texas or Louisiana, it's going to be me and we don't really have um, any minimums. We don't really have, we don't make anybody jump through the hoop. We're not going to ask you to invest $25,000 in stock. Um, we can get you started with just some simple paperwork and uh, get you on your way. But um, yeah, it's pretty easy to, to join up with us. Um, we just uh, want to make sure that it's a good fit, you know, for, for both of us. And uh, we would like to do business. Well, I think that's a good uh, tip for those retailers out there. And of course, some of them or many of them who are in that position will see you at the Wessa show. And this kind of gives us a chance to bring in Wessa again, because we are the Wisdom by Wessa show. And we certainly like to talk to the people about we, in terms of how Wessa relates to what they want to do and how they want to be successful. Yes, that's correct. We're very proud to be participating in, I think it's our going to be our third year at market. And um, my coworker and I, um, his name is Tate Stratton. He's an ex-professional rodeo guy. Uh, he knows everybody up there. He and I just joined WESA uh, this year, and we're looking forward to our first show as members. Uh, we'll be up there on the 11th floor, and we'll be happy to, to talk to anybody that comes by. We're going to have um, my big boss, too, Steve Nash. He's the VP of sales for North America. He should be in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think, with us, too. And, of course, we'll have Courtney. She's our marketing director. She's amazing. She makes everything happen. So we'll have a pretty full booth, and we would love to to visit and talk with everybody. But we love WESA, and we love uh, being, being uh, uh, you know, connected with it. And it just every time we go, we meet the right people, and, and we just it's just a great experience. 
Well, I think it will be a good show for you. I think a lot of people hopefully will be introduced to you that don't know you by this program. And Mike, we really appreciate you taking the time to chat with here on Wisdom by Wessa. No, I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, I've been with, I've been with the company for five years now. I love what I do. I love building the relationships because you can imagine I don't actually sell boots. You know, I build relationships with people. Uh, we're in for the long game, and we're looking forward to doing business in the United States for a very long time. And uh, we're nationwide now, coast to coast, and we're just looking to grow, and we want to grow with uh, good partners. So thank you all so much for having me. Well, thank you for taking the time. Enjoy chatting with you. Yes, sir. The show notes and a link from today's show can be found on the WESA website, wisdombywesa.com. And, of course, feedback, we'd love to hear any feedback you might have. There's a contact link on the site as well. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets.